I'm going to invite questions from the audience to our three panel members. When you want to ask a question, you stick your hand up. I will not ignore you. You put your hand up and uh, you will be acknowledged. Promise, promise, promise. I'm not a politician. Uh, I promise you, you will be acknowledged. Keep them short and sharp and sweet. Uh, and uh, uh, come up to the mic because then you'll be on our on our website, won't you? Okay, um, and you specify who you want to ask the question of. Not the whole panel, one person. Who's first? Um, okay, that gentleman there. Come here. That. I've been reading a book called The Hundred Year Marathon by Michael Pillsbury. Has anyone heard of it? Anyone reading it? And uh, <clears throat> the full title is uh, The Hundred Year Marathon China's Secret Strategy to Replace America as a Global Superpower. And um, in it, he says that um, uh, that um, in 1990, the Chinese Communist Party changed the teaching of the history of US-China relations. Going back 150 years, they changed the whole story about what happened. And apparently the, the Americans have been one of the big supporters of China in that period. <clears throat> and they've made them out to appear evil going back to President Lincoln, uh, President Tyler, and apparently, according to them now, everything the US did was to weaken China, um, which is pretty appalling, really. Um, why, why didn't, I've just got two questions here, why, why didn't the US do something about it? Because they could have, they would obviously know that there's been, been this big change, that people are now taught a completely false history of US-Chinese relations, and um, and this has been going for 29 years. And the other thing is, um, is it still being taught to Chinese students today? So they're, they're my questions. Yeah. Thank you. I sit there. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, you come on. Can I sit down? Yes, please. Right. Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, luckily, I think Michael. Chris Ray is now a, a kind of advisor to Donald Trump, right? And uh, he's a very intellectual, well-read scholar and advisor, and uh, I think tank uh, uh, manager, right? Chairman or something. Mm -hmm. Is it the Hudson Institute? Hudson Institute. Yes. Yes. I think uh, he's writing his book talking about many of the things, but... Uh, uh, and I agree with him in many uh, areas that uh, there of his analysis of the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things is uh, uh, the communist, the nature of communism itself is like it's so evil. And, and some somebody even said before that oh you have Zhao Ziyang, Hu Yaobang, some of the reformers trying to do something. Mm -hmm. And I said in this system, no matter how good intention an individual could have, you'll be crushed because the system is so evil. So look what happened to Zhao Ziyang and Hu Yaobang again, right? Chinese textbook will not change because the propaganda controlled completely. Uh, as we know, Orwellian society, typical, um, uh, one of the typical uh, uh, symbols is misinformation. They will always use information according to what they need, right? They can call your friend today, they'll call your enemy tomorrow. And this happens on the people's uh, uh, daily and uh, CCTV every day. They criticize America, the day they heard something said in the US they don't like, they will criticize you today. And tomorrow they say, oh, we are a good friend with America. So they keep lying every day accordingly. Therefore, they tell people's information always accordingly. So people are used to this. People are used to this. When, when the uh, central propaganda TV system say uh, America is so good, we, we welcome uh, certain president come to our country, we welcome. And the next day they criticize them and the whole country is used to it. Because they manipulate them so at ease. So they control the system so well. Therefore, they are efficient and effective. Which is true. Uh, so. But with Trump's waking up and the uh, US uh, today, 
I think they are on the right track. I think, but uh, you cannot change communist China. You have to destroy it. Because what, what Michael they did the mistake he admitted is that they hope by giving them the world world WTA system so that they will become a free market. So they will become an open society gradually because they see the benefit of the, the rest of the world opening like them to be like USA. And they, they are wrong because they do not understand the nature of communism. They have good intentions, like many people, but you cannot use good intentions with evil. You have to defeat it no matter what. Okay. Uh, so I was interested in your comments uh, about China trying to take over the monetary system with a digital currency. Um, so China banned Bitcoin and other digital currencies uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, and recently, uh, Xi Jinping has stated that um, China should um, become a world leader in blockchain. And they seem to have now relaxed their laws about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. And it looks like they're regulating all the on-ramps there. Um, and they've also announced the digital yuan. So I guess I'm interested, first of all, do you think that the ban was to enable them to try and control uh, the cryptocurrency uh, in China? And secondly, what do you see going forward with the digital yuan and other cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, which are almost the opposite of what the digital yuan would be? And how do you see them kind of all living together in the Chinese system? Yeah, just my personal understanding. Uh, one of the things at the meeting, at the fourth preliminary session, uh, because of trade war with US, China already see the, its own weaknesses uh, in so many areas. Basically, technologically speaking, US controlled most of the things, especially the, the, the SIM card thing, the SIMs. Uh, they can't do it. And the telecom telecommunication is impossible without US technology inside, like Huawei and the ZT and etc. Uh, so, and also they realize the economy declining so dramatically, but they want to fight against the US uh, silently. First, way, first, first part of the strategy is what they said is uh, regional dominance. They want to dominate the Asia Pacific area first by having all the countries agreeing to join them. And therefore, you use your system, we use our system. So they will use their currency to start with within the Asia Pacific bloc, using digital yuan, digital currency as well. And then so they want to have two system, two system parallel system, so that the world will already divided, like you've been weakened because of that. And they say, hey, we don't worry about you. Because right now everything is tied to US dollars. And therefore, they find it hard to move around because everything is exchanging that standard. So they want to set up their own standard by first of all setting up a block. Uh, they see it's easier for them to conquer Asian countries because they know Asian people in general, the mindset is trade is number one and then everything else is not that important. We don't have to have freedoms, right? As long as you give us the work, the job, plus all the military powers and everything else, uh, and the speed, because they're so fast and effective. Give you an example. What the city is doing is a uh, light rail system, is it? The George Street F took, took a long time. Mm -hmm. If you give that job to the communist China, they may finish the entire thing in two months. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Because mm -hmm. They do things, they don't have to think about anything else, just carry out the order. They have all the companies shut for two months, for everything move out here. So they just do the thing what they want to do. Uh, so like a one-child policy, they have the whole nation in place. Everybody has to obey. Right? It, that's what it is. A lot of loss of babies, just like that. So they will do that. They will dominate first digital currency, Yuan and digital currency as well, and then to to compete with US. Yeah. Okay, Warren. Uh, I I'm not an economist. I have a question about the money issue. 
Five years ago, I went to Darwin, in Broome, and to my shock, I noticed that a Chinese grocery shop have a sign that you can use Chinese card. Uh, we have credit card here, but we can't buy things use our credit card in China. In China, we can't do that. But China uses a Zifu Bao. It's like a PayPal, but Chinese Zifu Bao. And you can use actually use that Chinese credit card here in Broome, in Darwin. And I was very alarmed, very, very alarmed. Because uh, it feels like, it, I feel like uh, it's being controlled by China, the Darwin, the Broome, uh, in a certain scale. Uh, maybe I didn't really notice much when I in Sydney go to Chinese shop or just pay, I never noticed any sign. So when I come back to Sydney, I realized that lots of Chinese grocery shop also have a sign and said, you can pay that. You know, basically it's a large number of Chinese community here in Australia and lots of them travel to China, they all have that Chinese paper. Okay, and uh, it's in Chinese money and goes direct into Chinese bank. I don't know how much it affects the Australian economy and also how much it affects the infiltration of Chinese control in the Australian market. Second question to Bob, sorry, I have to do that. Uh, it's about, um, I realized that uh, Donald Trump actually uh, denied the ownership of a port in Long Island or somewhere there because it was controlled by Chinese company and he withdrew out of security reason. Do you think any viable uh, possibility for the Australian government to think about the security reason to withdraw the Darwin port under control of Chinese company? Well, thanks for the question, but to be honest, I'm not expert in this field as well. I um, I did notice that in the about previous in the last two years, uh, especially in like in Chinatown, in in city, in Bow, in Isu, in many so called like um, Chinese community servers that more, many many shops nowadays can use um, like basically Chinese currency to buy Australian stuff. Uh, for me, I. Yeah, also have a little bit a lot, but I mean, I'm not that worried about this because I think um, I think it, it can be a good thing for for um, for the for, for good cause because I think if if people coming outside of China can use money freely, I, because I, I know some people they are actually take advantage of these things because when they come to Australia. They can, well, um, in China, so every person has a limit of, of quotes that they can only transfer 15,000 US dollar equivalent money out of China. So it's about 60,000 Australian dollars. So every year, every single Chinese person, citizen, can only transfer this certain amount of Chinese yuan into other currencies. Uh, it's like a financial. Um, regulation or financial control, and I think um, in general more freedom uh, delivers more good things, even in the financial system. So I actually think it can be a good thing for people to use use that. I think a gentleman has a follow question. Oh, that's it. Right. Okay. Um, and, and, uh, and the previous gentleman asked a question about the history books in China. I was grown up in the 1990s, so after Tiananmen Square massacre. Um, based on my memory or my understanding, um, there was only one decade, which was 1980s. It was a relatively free and democratic decade. Uh, it's like uh, in many universities in, in China, uh, people can discuss many things freely. In that decade, so people did have, have hope uh, of a democratic, a free country of China in the near future. But Tiananmen massacre destroyed everything, and everything goes back um, after the massacre. So, yeah. well, of course, <clears throat> the Port of Darwin should never have been given to the Chinese government and the 
and they've got the port in Newcastle as well. Uh, of course, the uh, we, Australian government should get those back somehow. I, I don't know how, if they've got the inclination to do it, I think they're too stupid to want to do it, to be honest. But uh, I don't, I'm not quite sure how, how you go about doing that. But they should um, confiscate all assets the Chinese Communist Party has acquired in Australia. Um, I can just see uh, the Chinese government sending out troops to defend those assets if we try to take them back, to be honest. I've been following the China story for 40 years and seven months. I used to be a speaker on the Sydney Domain. And Colin Laverton, who was uh, someone who used to hang around with one of the great orators of our time, uh, John Webster, who's now dead, but at the time he was anyway, and he shows a television thing. He had a portable TV about China invading Vietnam. Then it dawned upon me exactly what the danger was. I have followed the story with great degree. And in relation to certain things and activities that they, the Chinese involved themselves in, he mentioned Montenegro. Well, there's 4,000 Chinese living on a, a ship, building this massive bridge to connect places down in the mountains down there. But not only that, those buildings there, they're in Angola. There's five cities. They're outside of the capital called Luanda. And I've been to the law, and I went there in 2011. There was no Chinese there. And do you know, Bob, uh, someone by the name of uh, Howard W. French? Does anyone know Howard W. French? <coughs> Anybody? No. Well, Howard W. French is an authority. He, on what the Chinese have been doing there, he's written three books on the Chinese colonisation of uh, Africa, and I've had the great privilege of talking to him. Anyway, but I suggest strongly you do. But China's activities, it in infiltrates places and, and it forms these enclaves and these hegemonies just like the Greeks did. And they're not like the Romans invading you and they infiltrate you and these chaps are right. Oh, well, it wasn't really a question, but yeah, um, it's quite, you mentioned the Chinese did temporarily invade Vietnam at the end of the Vietnam War because they said they were provoked by the Chinese, by the Vietnamese Communist government. There's quite a matter of when that happened. Typically, of the Australian politicians groveling to the Chinese government. <coughs> the idiot Andrew Peacock said the invasion of Vietnam by China was Vietnam's fault. I remember him saying that. He said, it's Vietnam's fault. Um, and also, not commonly known, but there were Chinese Communist People's Liberation Army soldiers fighting in the Vietnam War alongside the North Vietnamese as well. But a lot of people don't know that. Um, I certainly would like to know more about all the Chinese enclaves and infiltration all over the world. Um, obviously, you, <clears throat> you probably read up on it uh, more, uh, more than I have, but um, wherever they are, that's... Uh, more power for the Chinese Prime Minister government. I'm on camera now, so it's um, okay though. I've already been blacklisted from going to China. <laughs> the money you'll say. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I, I'm quite concerned about um, the Chinese state at the moment. Um, I started saying that I consider the Chinese government to be a fascist state. Um, because I think look, the, the, the patriotism and nationalism they're um, encouraging fervently and the control of the people is um, combined, I think it's, um, I, I would describe it as that. Um, I suppose my question is um, a, a little bit personal, but um, how does one, like myself, isolates. I see a threat in China and I'm very concerned about it. I look at Australia where I was born. My family emigrated to Australia in, from Europe in the 1950s and 60s 
and they came to escape the problems there and live in a free country. And I see Australia becoming more and more like the places they left. And I see the, the, I see both this sort of, perhaps, this is a cliche, Marxist ideology plus this sort of, um, slavering, um, the slavering nature going after the Chinese and their shiny um, cities and trains. Um, though I have pointed out to some of these people that by this point um, I would be in a gulag somewhere probably, or my social credit would be zero, um, and I'd just be sort of stuck in my apartment. Um, but my social credit score here, like we don't have these things obviously yet, but my social credit score here seems to be zero. Um, I'm 26, um, I'm not completely stupid, I'm not the smartest person ever either, um, and I'm studying um, a city planning degree, though they should call it sort of, I don't know, city administration, right? Um, but I, I find myself unemployable, and, and two of my university lecturers have told me before, um, for the compulsory years, uh, the compulsory years where the study came up, that I would be unemployable, and after more than thirty applications, more than eighteen months on and off, um, I find that what they said is true. Um, all the people, all the employees, government and the uh, and the firms came in and they were pitching to us, and they said, um, "We're looking for young, smart, shiny face." Oh, I had that bit. People. Who, who we can mould and shape, who are blank slates. They said this so often. And I thought to myself, well, I'm effed, um, which is true, it seems. Um, and, then, and then this is the second part, kind of, is uh, you're talking about the, um, the, the, the sort of, you know, the, 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 the Chinese economic expansion in Africa and control there, in Luanda and Yashikuti and places like that. Um, well, I don't want to be too mean about it, but walk past Martin Place, take a left and walk about 500 metres, and half the Sydney CBD is, is China City, Burwood is, Ashfield is, um, Chatswood is, Eastwood is, Hurstville is. Yes. Um, you don't have to go far to find big Chinese colonies, and um, I'm not sure that everybody is here like the old-fashioned um, sort of story of coming to make a life in Australia and settle down, especially these days. Um, and, and you follow some Mandarin speakers, um, from what I understand, um, as very much loyal subjects of China, and they not all can vote, though obviously many can, um, but they, they're already influencing our society in all sorts of ways. And the, my last point is, and you're welcome to judge me on this, um, I was 25 when I found out I lived in the West, um, which is astonishingly stupid, so I mean, I'm not the smartest person ever. Um, at school, um, and, and I'm, not, I'm not even a generation Zoomer, I, I'm a millennial, so I, I remember before having a smartphone and all that sort of stuff. Um, we lived in multicultural Australia, um, it originally came from the English people who invaded and killed all the Aboriginals. Um, and then um, modern Australia emerged and we're all beautiful, we all hold hands and sing Kumbaya. I'm just paraphrasing this. Uh, and and my, my school was uh, 90% ethnically, um, well, probably 60% Asian ethnicity, mainly China, but obviously most born here. Um, and actually, I've I have, you know, I have quite a few, obviously, also, um, also, um, Australian Chinese friends. Um, what's the point of this? How, will, how do you maintain a free, Western, um, fairly liberal country when uh, it seems, I would say, a lot is stacked against you? And I would say our ruling political class quite likes the idea of um, the Chinese control over a um, sort of Instagram-obsessed population? Um, I, I think that, so the main question is about uh, how, like any suggestion, like how we can uh, maintain this free free country as it was, and, and probably um, at the moment it's not as free as probably decades ago. Um, I, I, I think I, I don't like, I don't really like multiculturalism, even though I came from China. Uh, I mean, I, 
what I believe is one culture, but with different people from different backgrounds. But um, I think like John and I, we came here not because we want to promote Chinese culture. We love Australian culture, or in general, we love Western culture. So that was the reason that we come here. We are not come here to promote any Chinese culture. Um, I, I love to see some Chinese elements in some service, uh, but I think Australia and some Western countries have uh, two rules, um, rules on like uh, what kind of people we should take. I, I can see many Australian Chinese people living here. They don't like Australia whatsoever. But they just regard Australia as a country have like good environment, better education for their kids, um, and probably some opportunity, opportunities to make money. But they don't like Australia from their heart. And I think Australia should not take this kind of Chinese people or, I mean, foreigners. If you don't like, like here, if, if you don't really love this country, don't come here. Go, go back to China. So that's my, my take on this. Um, and um, I'm not sure whether I should comment on your uh, study background things, because I think you mentioned that, and uh, I think probably it's a question direct to me. Um, I don't know, I, I mean, your, your education background is not bad. It's much better than gender studies, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely unemployable. Um, but it's very, it's very hard. I mean, from, from school to, to, to business to, to, to a career, it's, it can be very different. Um, I, I would say I was a little bit fortunate to have a good mentor to lead me in, in the career. But probably take more time to do some intern to see whatever opportunities, opportunities you have. Maybe can find a way to work with career. I love that contribution. Thanks. Thank you very much. There are two things that are the main terminus of what makes a nation a sovereign nation. The first one is the ability to mint your own currency, and the second one is to determine who may transgress your borders. Uh, is there any way of stopping the Chinese having their digital currency, which of course has that attachment to it, that it has complete control over everything you do. You know, oh, someone's bought some gold, bought some real estate, oh, oh he's, he's got a bit of a stash of food. Uh, that total and utter control through currency, is there a way of stymieing that total control over our sovereignty? Yeah, I agree. It's a simple question. It's almost like uh, the previous gentleman's question, but Mr. Uh, want to comment about multiculturalism. Right? If you want to promote multiculturalism, you lose your identity. What Australia stands for, we don't know. Multiculturalism, what is that? Right? You're promoting different cultures, different values. And that's a bit of a, a danger of losing your sovereignty. Uh, we, yeah, I totally agree with the digital currency that you will lose the sovereignty because you cannot control it. And that's again like when you see uh, with US, Facebook and uh, Twitter, all that stuff become international. Already you lose part of your sovereignty because it's them controlling the platform. They can say disagree with anybody. So they become a totally different world, another world order. So that's again need to be. So similar to multiculturalism, it's also the government needs to do something. Um, with people intake as well. Like I will give you an example. What is the worry part? Is uh, it's not about Chinese or, or any other ethnic communities. But I mentioned China in particular is because, as I said earlier, people from China. China is not a normal country. It's a country with evil intentions. For instance, infiltration I mentioned earlier. Politically, for the Chinese Communist Party, they don't care which party. Because their people will speak for them. Therefore, you will have all the Chinese candidates from every level of government, council, state, and federal elections. They will put their people in every party. So it doesn't matter in the end. You, you have 
Gladys Liu or Jennifer Yang, they all speak for Communist Party of China, not you. Because they have their Chinese people into every sector of political uh, systems. It doesn't matter which party. Because they know the people they uh, support, give money, give this and that, uh, push for them, uh, will all speak for them. So it doesn't matter. And that's the infiltration, that's the real danger. We need to be very careful. And uh, the digital currency thing, if it's from China, there's nothing you can do. But what can only be done is this country, what do you want to do with it? And same with you. That's why the university like students from China saying, oh, give, the, give, give, give us a lot of money. But you have to think the other problems associated with it as well. You have a group of people coming here, like the video show. They don't even <coughs> la like the system here. They don't even cherish the values here. They just come here for the benefit of the economy, right? For them to do business both ways. They don't care about what you do. Uh, and so, why do you have many people like that in this country and gradually eroding um, this value system uh, and uh, people, like the gentleman said, make it harder to be employed? And you have these people here who do not even cherish the values here. They don't care. So that's the worry. So I think Australia also needs to do a lot of work. That's why I said comedy will not succeed in the end, a lot of work to be done in the West. Just the one or two minor observations. Um, you mentioned fentanyl during your, um, during your talk, and if my memory serves me correctly, I think that's what Michael Jackson died from, with an overdose of, of fentanyl. Anyway, that's just a, my observation. Um, the second thing, we, ha we have a Chinese friend who's age 30. She grew up in China. Um, she's adapted to the Australian way of life very well as a student. She speaks perfect English and she has a fabulous job. And we were recently, um, my partner and myself were recently going to Hong Kong and we asked her about the Chinese Hong Kong situation. And she says, no, I don't feel sorry for the Hong Kong people. And we said, well, why not? And she said, they're just experiencing what we experienced our whole life. That was her observation. Okay, now to the question. Um, China has embraced state political, or state capitalism with vigour, but with Marxist political thought that capitalist powers such as the US seek to exploit the world. For the US, China China's uh, rise is good for US business, or, as Donald Trump says, China is destroying, destroying the world. And my question is, can China and the US achieve a peaceful resolution to the trade wars? Very difficult question. Um, my answer, probably not. Simply because the systems, because China is not like, not like a normal country, will reason with anybody. If you put a proposal there that makes sense, we will accept China is not like that. Imagine the world trade, US and China trade the first part, the last minute they cancelled, right? They will play the game along uh, all the time until they see some loopholes. They always try to delay the time and try to wait for something to happen. They are very good at divide and conquer. Uh, like when you deal with Hong Kong, like Hong Kong, as I said, Hong Kong is now the example for the entire world, even for democracy, because they are the ones been standing up for so long. You know, we, you know, at expense of losing everything they have at the moment. They have been able to go to school, go to work for so many months, yet they know what they are losing if they do not stand up, stand up for it. Fundamentally, they will lose. They will become, like you said, your friend, Chinese people inside China. Which, what is the purpose of having some money without a purpose in life? Right? That's what Chinese people are without knowing it. They have forests of concrete buildings. Physically, they have lots of things today, surely developed. 
But spiritually, morally, they have nothing. So poor. They don't even know what's good and bad. And therefore, I stand up for Hong Kong, you know, from my body and soul. They are standing up for the rest of us. And that's why I think the Western world needs to wake up stronger because they've been infiltrated already successfully to many degrees that the Western governments begin to weaken themselves, right? Weaken themselves. Like America allowed China to go to WTO uh, 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 and, and uh, for the business sake, uh, American manufacturer jobs are lost in the end, right? And the Wall Street people don't care why, they are the ones making money. They have the teachers' unions' insurance money invested into Chinese companies without the teacher knowing it, or they make money out of it. But they're supporting a regime, a brutal regime, without even knowing it. They have money gone there. Like the business sector all want to make money. They don't care. So they lost their traditional values and moral ground too. Hong Kong people are standing up for the entire world. So I think if we do not support Hong Kong, the Western democracy is going to be a laughing matter because the Chinese will say, look, see, we can successfully divide and conquer, threat and bribe, right? Corrupt you, bribe you, threaten you, and, uh, and uh, manipulate you and buy you over, right? They can successfully do it, already do so. Look, 70 to 80% of Australian energy sector already being owned by China, right? So imagine what else? So how can you have a job uh, when the government do not care so much about themselves? So it's both ways. That's my understanding, yeah. Thank you very much for coming here today. I, I wanted to ask you about something. Um, since I'm a foreigner here too, I can, I can observe things that have been good and what things have gone wrong. Um, maybe your people, wherever they are in the world, may learn something from the good and from the bad experiences of the West, as I have been learning in the past 12 years. Um, in 1965, America was 89% um, white, what they, what they call that, white per race, and it was a superpower. Australia, around about the same time, was whatever, 90-something percent of its own uh, Anglo-Saxon uh, found, founding uh, stock, of the founding stock, um, and it was a successful, uh, functioning country. Most of the countries of the West have been successful, functioning really well, and um, improving uh, human rights and all that quite well, so long as they have been overwhelmingly of one ethnic group, uh, their own funding, uh, founding stock, the, the Denmark, Danes, and France, and French, and all that. Um, since uh, you can observe that America, Australia, and most of the countries in the West are slowly um, becoming less and less of their founding stock. Um, your people have stuck to their guns and they have not uh, let this uh, Western um, idea infiltrate the country. Um, what do you think would happen if China, with its 91% Han Chinese uh, ethnic group that is running the show, if they suddenly implemented such ideas as uh, multiculturalism and uh, Western liberalism as their policy, how far do you think that country would go? Thank you. Um, thank you for the question. I, I think um, the very bottom of the situation in China, this won't happen. Uh, China, uh, well, uh, it's, it's actually a shame that, I mean, the Western countries, including Australia, the US, um, have, I mean, accepted or imported too many people who don't share the same value or similar values. Um, and this is eroding the culture in the West in general. Um, and, and, uh, well, but, but I can understand to some point that there are some economic um, basis or economic reasons for, for them to do that because more people come in and the local birth rate probably is very low and they, they need people, they need um, money so 
in the, in the name of globalism, they are doing this for the last a couple of decades. Um, China won't do that. Uh, one thing is because the population is huge still, and and uh, uh, and the Ch Chinese people in a way is very arrogant. They may I may I say the yeah. Chinese birth rate is one point five four. That is the birth rate in China. Yes, it's it's decreasing because of the one child policy. And uh, even without one child policy, and uh, now China are open to at least two children for per family, uh, and are not very strict in how many kids you can have. Um, because the birth rate is decreasing, and China now is facing a severe issue of the pension. Well, like Australia still have similar issues. Um, not enough young people, working people, to support the superannuation, superannuation system. So similar things happening in, in China. Um, so China have, has to, to change their one child policy. But actually with the development, development of those mega cities, the birth rate would go down. It doesn't matter what kind of policy you have. In Australia, I don't know the birth rate, but I believe it should be one point something. <laughs> One percent, yeah, yeah, similar, similar figures. Um, this is the nature of modern cities, and uh, um, where was my point before? Uh, yeah, so I, well, anyway, I think I think um, I, I think I think China will have this kind of policies, um, but they in some cities at the moment. They are, I think, more, is it in Guangzhou that more uh, African people are coming to, like, migrating to, to China, to a certain part of China. But overall, China is uh, pro, pro, do, dominantly just one ethnicity. Uh, there's no minorities, no real minorities. And if, if there are any minorities, they want all minorities be part of the majority. This is, this is actually something Australia or the US or the Western countries should do. So it doesn't matter where you come from, you should be one of us. You are not separate from our society. And this is actually something probably Australia can learn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, I have one question. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, in terms of the um, digital currency previously uh, mentioned, I don't believe China will have a successful digital currency. Because China has no, no, I mean, self restriction on how they print their money. So the, the beauty of Bitcoin or the so called crypt, crypto uh, currency is there's a limit for the total amount of coins. So there's no inflation for that particular coins. So that, that was the nature of Bitcoin. But in China, chi, chi, in China, the inflation is about 20%. But, but the money may put it in like real estate. So uh, the CPI is not that high, but the uh, monetary expansion is huge. I don't think China will have any so-called crypt crypto currency or digital currency successfully. So I don't think this is something we need to worry at the moment.